Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending this Arrow webinar for cloud providers. My name is uh, Tai Samsi, and I'm technical business developer with Arrow focused on the VMware Cloud Provider Program. So today we're going to cover the vCloud availability 3.0 and uh, talk about uh, how it can benefit you as a cloud provider and enabling uh, you to make offers like disaster recovery as a service and use it for onboarding of your customers. With us today, we have Ashley Davis from VMware, who's going to take us through uh, the product, uh, what's new, where it came from, and how you can use it uh, in your organization. All right, Ashley, uh, would you uh, be so kind and do the presentation? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Thais. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for the introduction. I'll just uh, switch to my screen sharing. If you give me one second, thank you. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining uh, this webinar uh, hosted by Arrow. My name is Ashley Davis. Uh, as Tace has explained, uh, I am the EMEA Aggregator SC Lead, uh, supporting our VCPP, our Cloud Provider Program Aggregation Teams uh, from a technical perspective. And today I'll take you through the, uh, as Tace has mentioned, the vCloud Availability 3.0 uh, functional release uh, in terms of market opportunity background. Uh, and also uh, a new project we've got called Project Pesto, uh, which I'm interested in some feedback, possibly from uh, also from the attendees today, and we'll follow up afterwards, but um, just a few slides on that at the end. So uh, obviously appreciate we have time. This is a usual disclaimer <laughs> that VMware is always showing uh, around product features and development. Obviously, be Cloud Availability 3.0 is now generally available. Um, so there aren't any roadmap items in this. Um, so it's more of just a, a standard disclaimer that we always show at the start of every presentation. But uh, as far as I understand, this uh, webinar is being recorded. So um, yeah, I've taken out any sensitive material anyway, but um, so you can probably just ignore this, but always good to be, um, to be mindful of uh, the uh, issues that are highlighted in the disclaimer from VMware. So from an agenda perspective, um, I'll just cover off the introduction to kind of disaster recovery. That should be fairly swift. Uh, we're all familiar with the concepts of DR. Uh, and then I'll talk about the evolution of the uh, VCPP availability and cloud migration solutions. Uh, that's really because vCloud availability is the amalgamation of previous uh, releases of vCloud availability, uh, 1.0, 1.5, 2, et cetera, and emerging of some other tools, which I'll speak about. Uh, then I'll cover uh, just some high-level details on vCloud availability. Uh, I did leave out uh, some of the, the high-level technical architecture slides. If necessary, we can follow up with a, a more dedicated section on that. But this is just today an overview of the uh, vCloud availability uh, capability, really. And as uh, Tay said, a sort of go-to-market strategy. Uh, and then a little bit around the PEST, uh, project uh, uh, Presto. Uh, so I mentioned the it Presto, which is a DRES lead generation and co-marketing project that the Cloud Services Business Unit, uh, which is the US-based uh, business unit which produces this product, uh, is looking to engage with uh, across uh, the globe. Uh, and they're looking for EMEA service provider partners as well. So um, just cover that very briefly at the end. Uh, it'd be interesting to get some feedback. Uh, we can follow up afterwards as necessary. Uh, and then looking forward uh, and assistance resources, the usual kind of resource links at the end as well for kind of getting started and technical documentation, et cetera. So hopefully that's the agenda. Uh, everyone will be happy with that. Uh, from an introduction standpoint, um, obviously this is really just setting the scene uh, for a reason that application uptime really is critical for IT service delivery. But in some sense, this is a given, but um, as this is a DR as a service presentation, it's always good to kind of recap uh, on the fact that, you know, these are external, in this case, Forrester anal analyst reporting. Uh, indicating that, you know, some of these are some of the highlights are from an end user perspective, you know, why disaster recovery solutions are, you know, not to be ignored. Uh, and the fact that, you know, there's this high level uh, statistic of 93% of businesses that lose their, you know, their critical data center for 10 days, you know, go bankrupt within one year. So this is really uh, part of the kind of marketing engagement that, you know, we can work with you um, from a business unit perspective and here in EMEA with our, obviously our partner Arrow uh, to help you kind of, um, you know, create that service uh, and look at kind of you know, the business modeling as well, as well as the technical architecture from a delivery perspective. So just to kind of recap really on the you know, criticality of having a, a disaster recovery solution as an end user and then as a service provider, obviously we are um, you know, wanting to partner with you to produce that disaster recovery as a service solution. So this is really just recapping again uh, on DR solutions, uh, the fact that potentially they can lend to extended periods of downtime. Uh, you know, a lot of DR solutions are complex, uh, not just in the VMware or virtual 
uh, infrastructure arena. Uh, some of them have reliability issues, uh, hence the Dilbert picture uh, around you know infrequent testing, and often they can be you know expensive and challenging, certainly to run you know a number of uh, kind of practice practice tests as well, but also to get your customers to understand the fact that they need to test their DR functional capabilities on a re regular basis. So again, it's more of an economic uh, impact. Uh, insight really into the fact that uh, from this kind from a vCenter site recovery manager perspective which actually is a sister product of uh, vCloud availability because we do use the replication technologies that are embedded in uh, SRM which is obviously well understood and well um, you know burst technology in terms of uh, deployment it's been around for sort of 10 years plus so hopefully I'm not going too quickly but I want to make sure that we, you know, we don't have to spend some time on the product itself rather than spending too much time on the pre-marketing but uh, from a DR concept perspective, just to kind of set the, um, I think everyone's familiar with this, but uh, always good for a reset point uh, from a disaster recovery, you know, the RPO and RTO. Um, so we have uh, the recovery point objective and the recovery time objective. So, you know, the RTO, as we understand, is absolutely the target situation of time for service levels uh, for which the business processes must be restored when the disaster strikes. So uh, obviously that's, a, you know, a key critical component of any DR solution. Uh, and a recovery point objective uh, is obviously a business continuity plan planning module. It's the kind of the targeted period, the maximum targeted period in which the data uh, can be lost from the IT service. So the two together obviously are you know, uh, critical to DR planning. And I'm sure your end customers or whatever are already uh, in you know, receipt of uh, business planning decisions and architectures which you know, support their businesses depending on what kind of characteristics they need from an RPO and RTO perspective. So some of the use cases uh, uh, in terms of DR, disaster avoidance and plan migration, this is important as we come into the, um, you know, the aspects of uh, vCloud availability uh, as a tool as part of this kind of infrastructure for ecosystem of products. Uh, disaster recovery, just some definitions, you know, has the fastest, hopefully fastest RTO. Uh, obviously we want to recover from typically things like full or partial site recovery. And we hope that it's the least frequent and most critical use case. So uh, again, that's something that most major organizations and SMB organizations do plan for. Uh, disaster avoidance is really around anticipating those out critical outages, uh, looking at failover prevention, uh, and if necessary, uh, having a graceful shutdown procedure. So data loss is not a critical component in, in business continuity. And then plan migration, uh, probably, as it said, one of the most common use cases, and this really fits into the onboarding uh, category, I think that Tace mentioned at the start. Uh, which is really a sweet spot for uh, the vCloud availability product and its history, uh, where the capability to be able to onboard, in this case, tenants onto the uh, service provider platform, the VCD back platform, is one of the main use cases that uh, vCloud availability was driving from, from the start. Uh, obviously, it has minimal planned downtime for the workload relocation and you know, has other benefits as well. So this is really following on from the, uh, the success story of Site Recovery Manager as a sort of single tenant rather than a multi-tenant product for the enterprise arena, uh, where it enabled organizations to, uh, you know, live migrate uh, elements of their data centers between different global DCs uh, and provide also global load balancing. So just to kind of uh, reset really DR, DA and kind of uh, PM plan migration, what the use cases are. But I'm sure we're all familiar with that. Uh, I won't spend too much time on this. This is really about testing gaps between uh, IT organization without automation and virtualization changes to application con uh, configuration. But really the thing I'd like to, you to take away from this is that it's the automation aspect uh, on the self-service aspects of DR as a service with vCloud availability that really make it uh, stand out. So we are aware there are other products uh, in the market segment as well from other vendors, uh, but certainly from an integration perspective with vCloud Director as the multi-tenancy infrastructure as a service platform, uh, you know, vCloud availability stands out uh, in terms of its capability within the vCloud provider program as well. So if there are any questions, of course, um, I'm not monitoring the chat window, but we can pick up those at the end. Uh, this is really just to say DR plan testing should be absolutely be a non a routine, non-disruptive activity. So again, this is coming at it from a DR uh, as a service perspective, but there is also a very strong use case for migrations. And we'll speak about uh, the functional differences uh, in vCloud availability for that. But um, certainly um, parallel and cutover tests, you know, are, are interesting and certainly they must be, must be part of a, a standard uh, organization's DR recovery plan. So using uh, vCloud Availability Manager from a tenant perspective, you know, one of the main drivers has been to make the tool uh, as intuitive and easy to use. So uh, 
end user can uh, easily test or migrate uh, in a bi-directional relationship if necessary, um, you know, VM uh, migration from their on-premise into the uh, cloud provider's uh, data center location. So I believe let's cut to the chase from uh, a VCPP availability and migration solutions perspective. Now we've covered, covered off the, the sort of basics around DR and some of the terminology. Uh, this really just then gets to the uh, into the, the meat of the discussion around uh, the fact that uh, the current incarnation, uh, version 3.0 of the cloud availability, uh, has come from uh, you know a collection of products, um, including uh, the cloud availability DR to cloud, which was the first incarnation uh, of the cloud availability 1.0, uh, which was an on-prem to cloud uh, migration and replication. And recovery tool. Uh, we also had the vCloud Direct Extender, which was previewed, I think, two years ago at VMworld. Uh, again, was an extension tool, uh, really a sort of hybrid extension tool for VCD. Uh, then we had the vCloud Availability Cloud to Cloud, which came out in the previous editions um, of uh, vCloud Availability. So it was a sort of subset. And then we had, obviously, we have as a separate product, uh, HCX, which is beyond the scope of today's discussion, but is again another migration tool uh, that some cloud providers are using but it's not natively integrated with the uh, vCloud Director in the same way that vCloud availability is. So uh, again, different, slightly different use cases. And we do have a slide which shows some of the functionality in terms of um, you know, the differences between the products. So some of the feedback we received really from some of the previous editions and which has possibly held back uh, some of the adoption that we do have a strong use case reference uh, database now for customers in all the geographies, including here in EMEA. Uh, what we learned from previous versions is that uh, previously we had multiple products. So uh, just to confirm, one of the challenges with that was uh, we had different you know, different use cases, different products, and different some of therefore confusion with some of our service providers. So we had, for example, the migration of VMs to VCD and to vCloud availability. We had DR to and from VCD, which is a vCAV, and then we had DR migration between VCD instances. So therefore we had by association what we call an appliance sprawl issue. So we had a large number of appliances for the different functional requirements uh, of the different uh, sub-editions effectively of vCloud availability. This therefore led to complexity. Um, some of our service providers uh, were struggling uh, with issues around deploying, for example, DR to cloud, VCD to VCD uh, migrations and extender became challenging. There was a lack of operational tools uh, to support that uh, and cloud to cloud became its own trend actually and became more of a stronger use case uh, than perhaps some of the initial migration use cases which are still relevant but again a lot of service providers are quite interested in using uh, vCloud availability as a way to migrate and load balance some of their resource workloads between uh, their different in instances of vCloud director. So therefore uh, some of the expectations we missed were things like ease of use from a tenant and a provider perspective uh, UI integration, uh, having a singular UI rather than having multiple tools, multiple UI interfaces and the functionality merge. So this is really the next slide just then therefore covers off. Second, there we go. Uh, the, the comparison really of the vCloud availability and migration solutions. So as you can see on the left, we have the, uh, the products that uh, were originally available, such as vCloud Extender, uh, and some of the functional capabilities and the kind of market segment as well um, from a, a service provider uh, market segment uh, overlay perspective. So, for example, target size is really vCloud direct to extend. It was for the small customers, really. Uh, it was included with VCD. As we moved to uh, vCloud availability 1.5, uh, 2.0, we had this other option around looking at different cost models. So we had the free uh, migration capability. Um, which instead of incurring the usual 10 points per month, uh, which would be part of a DR as a service testing capability that the service provider would offer for onboard tenant migrations, uh, you know, we had this concept of, uh, of zero points per month. So again, that was more uh, from a pricing perspective, which you can see here, we had the sort of a bit of a mixture of capabilities, whether we, the service provider was looking at using HCX, uh, looking at the cost models and functionality capabilities of that. Uh, and then yeah, clearly the feedback back into the business unit was, uh, we have too many tools. We have, uh, you know, confusion in the marketplace. So let's try and simplify this. Obviously, we can't remove uh, HCX because that belongs to another business unit, the network and security business unit, and is still a valid approach for some service providers. But um, certainly for, um, uh, you know, our providers today, let's try and simplify the vCloud availability suite was the message that uh, was received loud and clear. 
So today uh, we've kind of simplified that down. So we've, uh, as you say, merged that. So vCloud Availability 3, uh, so I've highlighted in yellow, uh, still carries the same sort of cost model for migrations. Um, certainly, uh, you know, for the use case of uh, vCloud, availability, vCloud Availability for cloud to cloud DR, uh, it's still 10 points a month from a service provider kind of operational perspective. But certainly for the use case of uh, onboarding uh, or migrating tenant workloads into the cloud provider data center, uh, we're certainly, uh, you know, are still a, the enticing um, pricing model of zero points per month or effectively free per protected virtual machine. So you'll hear that terminology actually protected VM, which for those of you that are familiar with uh, vSphere replication, Site Recovery Manager, you know, is a standard terminology we mean for any VM that's kind of protected by this tool in the sense that it has a disaster recovery or a migration capability associated with it. So as you can see here, um, vCloud availability really uh, compared to NSX, uh, it's just a layer two and the B center to B center migration characteristics that are uh, missing at the moment from the functionality. But there's sections from uh, migrate VMs from B center to VCD, DR from B center to VCD, uh, and you know the other migrate VCD to VCD are all now available. So um, from our perspective, that means that we're capturing probably around. Um, 80 to 90 percent of the use cases that were atypical for you know this solution so as you can see uh, hopefully we've simplified uh, you know from the previous slide which is there to the current slide to make the cloud availability uh, easy to understand digest uh, and from a functional uh, capability perspective as well so let me just cover, therefore, uh, big cloud availability at a high level. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of technical architecture slides in a dedicated session that uh, we could cover, but just for the purposes of today, uh, we'll talk about the functional convergence that I mentioned before and just some simple kind of architecture overviews uh, slides and you know, the before and after scenario, I think, that Tace mentioned at the start. Um, so what we've achieved really with this latest edition of 3.0 is a unified architecture. We've merged together, as we mentioned on the previous slides, the extender functionality, the vCloud availability with VCD uh, version 2, vCloud version 2, vCloud version 1.5. So that's basically merging together the cloud to cloud DR capability, uh, which came out with version 2, and the original on prem to cloud capability, which came out with version 1.5. So VCD, uh, uh, sorry, vCloud availability 3.0 is really, uh, as I said, this sort of merge, final merge of those two functional code streams. Um, so that's one of the reasons we're happy to promote this more widely now with our uh, wider base of, um, of service providers, um, because perhaps some of the issues in the previous um, editions, uh, you know, were a prohibitor uh, in terms of the adoption of this technology. So we're hoping very much with the support of the business unit. Uh, and I was speaking last night with one of the product marketing specialists, and uh, they're very keen to engage with uh, uh, service providers here in EMEA. So uh, through any interesting uh, sort of scenarios or questions afterwards then please certainly get back in touch uh, through our Arrow colleagues uh, and then they, we can liaise with them and if necessary the business unit to assist in kind of getting up and running. But before and after, uh, before v, uh, vCloud Availability 3.0, uh, you know we had this mixture of DR to cloud, to out to cloud, onboarding, DR. Uh, as we mentioned before we had a steep learning curve, multiple products, complex workflow, and one of the most big challenges was really the complexity of installation, actually, uh, and the risk of configuration errors. So one of the cleanup items for version 3.0 uh, was to simplify the installation, uh, simplify the messaging uh, to the end user from a service provider perspective, and to try to simplify the experience as well, and also bring the UI, the user interface, uh, together and synchronize it with the, uh, the latest HTML5 uh, interfaces of the Cloud Director. So at least we have a kind of standard, as we call clarity type model for all the uh, VMware products. So as we can see here, uh, we've hopefully achieved that with vCloud Availability 3, and I'm sure there'll be further additions moving forward. Um, so again, just to recap vCloud Availability 3.0, just to restate, it's really a, a solution, powerful solution used by our cloud provider network partners uh, to provide simple, secure, and cost-effective onboarding. That's think one of the, uh, the key initial use cases, migration, and also DR as a service capabilities to or between multi-tenant VCD instances. So again, uh, the cloud-to-cloud -cloud DR became uh, an emerging uh, use case globally, and certainly here in EMEA, a lot of providers were interested in using its capabilities to migrate between the uh, cloud director instances and obviously keep their services online uh, from a tenant uh, you know SLA perspective so that was one of the key aspects of um, that version so hopefully we made it simple uh, in terms of converging 
hopefully cost effective obviously only time will tell in terms of market adoption uh, and secure as well so encryption for data at rest things like tls uh, for data in motion as well so introduce some security aspects which mirror the roadmap for vSphere replication and SRM, which has recently brought out some embedded uh, security characteristics in terms of the data uh, migration and uh, data synchronization capabilities of that tool. So again, the key features of version three, just to recap, uh, we have a native user interface integration with VCD and vCenter. So the vCAV UI is now directly integrated into the on-prem vCenter UI for the tenant. Uh, along with the context switching menu of VCD. Um, so once the tenant or VCD instances for cloud to cloud, the second scenario have been paired together, the workflow and protection management can be done from either on-premise uh, from a tenant perspective or VCD. Uh, and it's also intuitive and easy to use for any type of VM consumer. So hopefully we've got a couple of screenshots of the, uh, of the new UI. It's fairly uh, self-intuitive for uh, most tenant administrators to be able to get up to speed with it fairly quickly. Uh, we also hopefully simplified the workloads, uh, workflows sorry, that are easy to utilize and provide explicit control. Uh, we can now give uh, policy management on a per tenant basis with more granularity. Uh, and we can uh, give up to a five minute RPO uh, characteristic um, for replications. And the point in time instance is now sitting at 24. I think originally it was uh, something like about 12 and started off at about five. So. And we've finally introduced the ability to do re-IPing and re-addressing on failover, which has obviously been a, a capability of SRM for a number of years. So again, following the kind of SRM roadmap. Uh, and from an architecture perspective, we wanted to simplify the, I mentioned the, the appliance sprawl issues. We had a lot of VM uh, operational appliances as part of the previous editions. So now we have a single OVA for the provider, single OVA for the tenant, for them to deploy on the on-premise tenant data center side deploys just like any other VMware appliance, standard uh, OVA or OVF installation. Extremely intuitive, uh, and hopefully the service roles are clearly defined uh, and scale and can meet the provider requirements. That's more from the provider that possibly is operating you know, a large number of tenants. So again, vCloud availability is a simplification of uh, an evolution of the previous versions of uh, vCloud availability 1 and 2.0. Uh, from a very quickly, uh, there are a number of screens around this, but um, you know we have the uh, intuitive deployment experience. So the ease of operationalization, you can tell these are US lines with the Z. Uh, for example, on the right, you can see the, uh, the ability now to deploy what we call the different functional requirements. If, for example, you'd already deployed uh, a fully embedded or kind of combined appliance, you could deploy just the replication management aspect or the replicator or the secure tunnel. Uh, but if you want to do the full combined appliance, you can click on that follow the standard um, OVF um, configuration, uh, you know, standard approach. Uh, and as it says on the left-hand side, it's a single OVF for the provider, single OVF for the tenant. Uh, and for the provider, you know, they can choose the different functional capabilities. So the tenant, uh, on the tenant side, they only get the replication and tunnel uh, capabilities. They don't need the replication management uh, and the combined appliance. So it's a slightly different or simplified install for the tenant. So again, that was one of some of the feedback we took from the previous editions of the cloud availability that um, the tenants themselves, even though the service providers were issuing guidance uh, to their prospective tenants or existing tenants in terms of testing this service, there was still some a little bit of confusion and uh, misconfiguration about the installation of the, uh, the kind of the on-premise side of the uh, v cloud availability software. So hopefully we've improved that, but. Uh, I'm guessing as time will tell uh, in terms of version three, whether that's uh, you know easily absorbed into the um, uh, the tenant mindset. So from a UI perspective, uh, if you're familiar, those on the call that are using vCloud Director, um, we now have kind of as I said, an integrated uh, UI plugin now uh, with VCD. Uh, there's a vCenter plugin for vSphere integration as well. Uh, and we can see from a provider and tenant view and the replication uh, across different tenants. So we've got incoming replications from cloud, from on-prem, outgoing replications, tasks, system monitoring, et cetera. So there is an API uh, as well for this, for capturing some of this data for export into um, operational systems. Uh, but as we can see here, um, it's fairly intuitive, obviously it's just a screenshot, uh, to set up workflow and protection management from either location. So that's setting up cloud to cloud DR or VCD to VCD or on-prem uh, back into the cloud, uh, and also a reverse replication as well, because some clients want to test uh, bi-directional uh, disaster recovery and replication as well, so they can set that up uh, from their own single tenant login perspective. 
So hopefully that's uh, reasonably fairly uh, intuitive in terms of the UI integration capabilities. Uh, from policy and workflow management perspective, we have the uh, a new capability of granular policy management. So each tenant now can uh, have the ability to set a policy that is assigned to a, a single tenant or set of tenants. So that's from an SP perspective, sorry. Um, but the tenant themselves can then set up uh, yeah, five minute uh, RPOs per protected virtual machine as the kind of the object that is protected. The ability to do the 24 uh, pointed time snapshots we remembered, not VM snapshots. Um, which, which makes the point there, we do use a different technology, controlling the number of VM replications, uh, obviously connecting to the correct VCD organization as well um, uh, from a policy perspective and obviously at the moment one policy per organization. So that is on the roadmap to increase the number of um, uh, vCloud availability policies per VCD org, but at the moment it's a one-to-one uh, -one mapping. So from a protection perspective, um, we have you know fairly intuitive uh, workflow in terms of uh, protecting VMs in this case from cloud to on-prem uh, or on-prem to cloud. We can set things like retention policies, uh, network settings, uh, IP modes, uh, and reconfig reconfiguration at any time, including the storage policy and the organizational owner as well. So uh, the ability to actually um, yeah, make some of these changes to existing policies once they've been created uh, as well as um, you know, setting up new incoming replications as well. So, um, from a uh, tenant perspective, uh, you know, it's relatively easy now to um, once the service provider has set up the correct permissions for the organisation uh, that the tenant is participating in, in terms of the VCD uh, instance, uh, it's relatively straightforward just to advertise that URL so the tenant can then set up their replications and onboarding uh, to attach to the correct uh, uh, VCD organisation. So to make sure there's no issue of kind of a you know, tenant crossover. So vCloud availability three, um, it's conscious obviously we're sort of uh, 30 minutes in, but from a details perspective, um, this is a sample high level architecture, uh, just using a standard um, on-prem. So on the left-hand side, we have a typical on-prem with a VS, uh, you know, SDDC, vSphere, vSAN, NSX. In this case, we've plugged in the uh, vCloud uh, availability on-premises appliance. We've installed that installed the vCloud availability v center plugin uh, and we've made a connection therefore into the top right hand corner in this case Charlotte which is from Virginia but could be any cloud provider VCD instance as you can see here we've got replication relationships between the VM uh, two uh, joined together by the red dots and we've also got replication uh, rep, uh, capabilities between VM one but the point I wanted to highlight here was at the same time it's possible for the provider uh, with an inter uh, cross data center connection effectively to have a federated, uh, in this case, VCD instance, but also to set up replications between cloud to cloud. So as well as offering uh, on-prem uh, to cloud, we've also got cloud to cloud in the same architecture. So the client therefore gets bi-directional management, but effectively all the management uh, on the right-hand side of the diagram is a service provider operational model uh, in terms of uh, setting up uh, replications between uh, vApps or individual VMs. So that's really the merger of uh, the previous versions of vCloud availability 1.0, 2.0, and now into 3.0 to bring those two together. So from a VCD uh, deployment, uh, sorry, provider perspective, uh, these are sort of a conceptual diagram really in terms of you know, what are you looking to offer. Uh, if you want to deploy the vCloud availability manager, uh, you can then go down the right hand side, deploy the replicators, one payload per vCenter, deploy the tunnel, go through the uh, be cloud availability configuration wizards and then you're complete so assuming of course that you have uh, the VCD installation ready which is obviously a prerequisite of be cloud availability and we perhaps should have reiterated that but um, there's a sort of a fairly obvious statement around that but as a provider uh, a lot of the feedback we had from installations uh, including some of our personal services our partners was to try to simplify the whole uh, installation of the be cloud availability provider uh, perspective uh, so we tried to simplify that and also the tenant perspective as well. So hopefully we've taken uh, you know heed of that uh, and feedback and we've now introduced that into version 3.0. So that's what I, uh, I wanted to speak to you about today in the context of this call in terms of um, vCloud availability and its kind of architecture where it's come from, you know, the merge of the different versions. Now I wanted to bring to your attention something that's um, relatively new which is from one of our uh, my colleagues, uh, Anand, in the US, really around Project Presto. So this is really uh, uh, a connection request, really, from our business unit, 
uh, in terms of uh, you know we want to expand the capabilities and adoption of uh, vCloud availability so uh, obviously we've been through that we understand um, you know, the DRAS concept this is really how can we uh, drive adoption of cloud services through our partners uh, and this is really to give access to our cloud provider partners to some of the enterprise uh, accounts or from a direct sales perspective as well so we can start to drive uh, adoption of vCloud availability services from you know within our core sales teams as well so this is really just to sort of uh, reiterate what's in it from the cloud provider perspective uh, you know access to some of the potential enterprise account uh, DR and migration uh, requirements uh, driving top line growth um, the ability for uh, to, we acknowledge uh, the provider as well as a design partner. We're looking at preferential badging phases as well, similar to the vCloud verified badging scenario. Uh, there are options to, to access marketing support, so we can give you some marketing support as well. Uh, campaign in a box, things like uh, vCloud availability toolkits, uh, how to target your end customers. And also, if you do run into issues, though hopefully we hope that they are much simpler than in previous issues, uh, engineering uh, resources as well to help with the deployments. So um, again, you know, a lot more focus from our business unit on driving uh, adoption of vCloud Availability 3.0 beyond uh, some of the very large providers, uh, you know, we have uh, in terms of our kind of global portfolio of network of VCPP partners into this sort of middle tier, uh, the SMB tiers as well. So, you know, certainly you'd be interested to receive some um, feedback uh, from this call and any other uh, presentations and uh, adoption uh, marketing scenarios we're doing but from from your perspective as a cloud provider um, obviously the deployment of vCloud availability is a, a tick box number one uh, and also a process in place to look at your and customer demand so you know we can help um, uh, generate leads uh, with you we can start making pro, uh, profile changes on cloud.vmo.com uh, resources to help with the deployment of vCloud availability and also monthly reporting so we can track obviously the adoption and consumption uh, of vCloud availability. So again, it's more of a sort of uh, olive branch from our, pardon the English expression, or a request uh, for assistance that we can deliver uh, back into the, uh, you know, our European partner network here uh, around to drive up, you know, utilization of uh, vCloud availability three. So what do we need from, um, you know, what comes next in terms of to drive that adoption? It's really a demand generation website. So, you know, this is really to entice uh, your you know, end users in terms of are you ready for the next disaster? You know, a kit uh, to help you sort of uh, position the capabilities of uh, disaster recovery solutions based upon your architectures. Uh, and, you know, this is really about, you know, why should an end user potentially take a DR solution from a, a service provider partner in our VCPP network rather than a standard uh, cloud hyperscale provider. So it's really around hopefully the simplicity aspect, uh, the ability to set that up. You already have an on-premise vCenter and, uh, and vSphere capability. It's very easy to plug in the appliance and set up that replication tunnel back to your provider. Um, it's hopefully cost effective in terms of the CapEx investment. Um, you can accommodate growth from a provider perspective and also the security. So leaving the worries of kind of the DR service environment to the VCPP partner and the SLA that you will obviously construct with them. Uh, things like SSL encryption uh, and security as well uh, in terms of the buildup of that. So that's really just to sort of uh, to encapsulate what the business unit is thinking uh, in terms of uh, you know how we can try to progress and promote wider adoption of uh, vCloud availability. So very much hope that uh, you know from the this call we have today that uh, obviously yeah, is even with um, the, the Arrow uh, team as well here in EMEA or Nordic the Nordic region that we can uh, you know drive greater availability. Uh, so adoption uh, and awareness uh, of the capabilities of uh, vCloud uh, moving forward. So again, the next slide really just talks about how to find those potential partners um, uh, from an end user perspective. So they can go to cloud.bimo.com sub, uh, subsite, provided DRAS powered. They can watch the videos, they can find a provider and browse, display the list of accredited providers, uh, or registered providers. Then they can move through a selection process uh, start to capture customer information and they can start to notify the provider and customer. So again, this is just simplified workflow about how their, um, the business unit is anticipating that uh, we can kind of start to, you know, link together, you know, the microsite around uh, uh, capturing new opportunities from a service provider perspective and also how the end user potentially could uh, access, uh, you know, a network of, a, of installed and, and registered uh, cloud availability or DRs as service providers. 
how the this is just quickly on how the VCLAV uh, availability enabled partners will be listed. They'll be there at that to microsite at the top. And obviously, we'll make these slides available. Cloud.vmware.com slash provider slash DRAS powered. Uh, the end user then can can provide. These are just some example partner organizations that have already been through this process with us. Um, uh, some of them are just uh, dummy worm accounts as well, but just to give you an idea of um, here in EMEA, we have Brainworks, for example, and they are DRAS certified. So this is the point that uh, you know we'd like to increase that number of uh, providers that are in there, you know, to generate uh, generate a wider pool of uh, capability for our um, uh, end users in terms of uh, you know linking together with our core sales teams as well to make sure you know we drive awareness through that uh, and also drive greater adoption through our provider partners. So how to get there? Um, this is really just a little bit around the three pillars. So. The project Presto framework is really, uh, obviously we have the product side, um, the vCloud availability, the download downloadable components. As a partner perspective, um, you know, we're looking at some partners now around this project, uh, which is actually semi-live and, you know, is now offering functional uh, support to a number of partners in different geographies, uh, US, EMEA, and also APJ. Uh, and then from a VMware go-to-market perspective, um, you know, we can certainly connect customers as well to VCPP partners uh, we can start to um, you know provide support about how to videos program promotion and also enterprise core enablement to cross link with our core enterprise sales teams as well to make sure that they are driving you know the knowledge and awareness uh, that there are DR solutions in the locale in the Nordic region uh, that end users can potentially come to and, and, and access services from so from an opportunity perspective um, just to sort of um, move towards a monetization and kind of business value perspective, we do offer some support uh, around pre-packaged and customized services as well. So, you know, how can our provider partners actually make money and deliver new services from cloud availability? So, yeah, we do have support from our business unit in terms of GTM strategies for monetization options. Um, you know, for the different scenarios we've spoken about, DR, cloud migration, onboarding, analytics, et cetera. Uh, and potentially we can work with the partners to to assist you in terms of uh, you know assessing your current landscape for customers uh, and the viability of business critical applications for DR solutions, preparation of things like replication and disaster runbooks, um, tiered service models with uh, different snapshot replicant capacity, storage management, and RPO alignment as well, and also things like uh, monthly reporting, obviously which is you know, important for us as VMware in terms of capturing that usage, but also important for the provider as well. So this is really just to show, um, you know, we have um, some calculators as well, and we're working with uh, our GTM uh, colleagues here in EMEA and in the business unit in terms of looking at pa uh, packaging options. So um, things like cold and warm DR, you know, how should this uh, be priced, for example, as a solution, monetizing with setup operations and recurring testing. You know, how should you potentially set up a service and charge and bill for that? These are just some nominal figures. Um, the figures are unimportant. It's more about the kind of understanding the capabilities of the service that you can offer uh, and also, therefore, being able to kind of price elements and sub-elements of that and whether you sell them, you know, it's just a single DR replication service or you sell, you know, monthly Recurring DR test, you know, whatever the, the service model is that uh, the service provider is looking to, to create. So, for example, you could have a one-time setup for a 50 VM estate of a figure, in this case, $6,000. Ongoing kind of service testing um, and then managed service DR solutions, you know, priced differently. So, again, uh, you know, that's something we're looking for feedback with. And part of this program really into Project Presto uh, is to, you know, drive greater uh, connectivity between our providers, certainly here in EMEA in the Nordic region. Uh, as in one of our highly adoptive regions in terms of, uh, you know, we do have a number of reference partners in the region for previous versions of vCloud availability and the sophistication level is high. So uh, it would be interesting for to us to engage on a business and kind of commercial development aspect as well as the technical architecture aspect. So hopefully we can, uh, we can follow up with some uh, opportunity generation from there. So from a customer success uh, perspective, um, I just included here, uh, this, in this case, is actually our internal team just to provide a very simple uh, reference uh, architecture use case. This is really for uh, migrating uh, from a Cisco UCS SAN um, to Dell vSAN HCI, how we did that. Uh, in this case, we use vCloud availability and VCD um, to do 
the replication uh, migration as well. So this was completed in a matter of weeks, so it's effectively an internal reference. We do have, uh, obviously, on our public website, uh, and we can certainly point you at that, uh, external references as well, quite a large number of uh, service providers that you know have uh, tenant use cases that uh, they've fulfilled with big cloud availability. But in this case, these are just some of the um, impact statements around reducing the average migration to one day, Minimize migration complexity, um, you know, ease deployment and management with a fairly uh, you know, simplified VCD integration. So uh, certainly from the site reliability engineer in our Palo Alto headquarters, you know, we can migrate more tenants in less time. It's obviously simplified the process. So they're not in that sense a traditional VCPP partner, but um, you know, in this case, it's our cloud and productivity team, although you may not be aware that a lot of the labs that are own hands-on labs a lot of our bm world lab capability is all hosted on uh, the cloud director based platform so we're talking tens of thousands of virtual machines that are, are migrated uh, and destroyed and uh, respawned or whatever for various conferences and hands-on labs so we obviously do a lot of uh, into data center migrations vcd uh, organizational load balancing in terms of uh, you know, management uh, globally so we have locations in different global uh, cities so, you know, for us uh, internally, whatever, you know, we are looking at consuming our own uh, tools as well that we offer to our service provider network. So it's interesting that we are using, a, in this case, the business unit is using a, an internal reference. And I think one of the reasons we are I'm mentioning this as opposed to an external uh, VCPP partner is because vCloud Availability 3.0 is still relatively new. Uh, and a lot of the references we have for now are for previous versions. But because obviously this is an internal use case, they were given, uh, you know, inside uh, access to B3, Cav3, and the latest versions of BCD 9.5 and 9.7. So they were able to obviously drive that uh, that project through to completion probably quicker than some of our external partners. But still a valid use case. Uh, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. So from an additional resource perspective, uh, you know, there's some links here, and we will include these uh, in the uh, material afterwards. V Cloud Availability 3, uh, one of the, uh, the, you know, the availability blog. Uh, there are a number of light boards that we've recorded as well. Uh, if you go to our blog uh, light board page, uh, we have our standard product page, which contains all the uh, product documentation, including specific docs, uh, and then things like uh, bcpp.cloud uh, and a specific product page as well, and associated videos on our YouTube channels about um, you know, setting up uh, kind of demonstrations of the user interface in terms of setting up replications. Uh, just to let you know, it might take a little time for us to upload and um, refresh. I'll check again uh, whether we have the Cloud Availability 3.0 content up there, but you may see some previous versions, although the architectures are still valid. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, uh, you know, the uh, on-prem to cloud use case uh, is still a valid use case. You know, some of the interfaces may have slightly changed, but the principles are still there in terms of setting up uh, the replication uh, in you know, the different scenarios for cloud to cloud and on-prem to cloud. So that's uh, what I wanted to cover today. Uh, so kind of sort of 40, 43 minutes in. So uh, if there are any uh, questions, then uh, I'm sure Tace and the um, Arrow team have been tracking. If there are any questions now, if there are any afterwards, I'm sure we can either follow up uh, indirectly or directly. So if you have any. All right. Well, thank you, Ashley, for walking us through this. I just want to end with uh, a poll. Um, so if you guys are up for this. So if you would uh, like to answer this, this would be uh, great feedback for us. We have one single question though. I don't know if you can see that one, Ashley. Um, but basically it, it covers like upgrading from a super old version of vCloud Director to a newer one. I think this case is a bit more complicated though. So uh, maybe we'll take that one offline. I have uh, two questions coming in here. So. One of them is actually, uh, does uh, vCloud Availability 3.0 only work with VCD, or can you do vCenter to vCenter? Uh, it's an interesting question, but as I mentioned on the vCloud Availability, is clearly a VCD-only integrated product, so you need there is a, almost a prerequisite requirement that you need to run uh, VCD, so therefore you can't do vCenter to vCenter single tenant effectively. It's a multi-tenant capability for VCD. All right. I think that's about it for today. Um, no more questions in the Q&A. So thank you so much and, um, for, for attending and have a great uh, weekend, everyone.